Cleveland Browns announcing that Deshaun Watson will have to undergo season ending shoulder surgery. This so Browns announced Deshaun Watson out for the season. Well, maybe Deshaun Watson was performing um, in a way that the Browns were hoping he would perform. So I'm going to talk about something that sports media does not want to talk about. Something that they're scared to talk about. Something that makes them all look bad if they address it. The part that they don't want to talk about, the part that they don't want to acknowledge is that this couldn't have happened to a better guy, to be honest with you. And it couldn't have happened to a better organization, to be honest with you. They go out and they pursue a guy who's not accused by one, not accused by two, not accused by three. At that point in time, he was accused, I believe, by 10 different women of sexual harassment and assault. And the Cleveland Browns decided that they were going to pursue him to be their new quarterback to replace Baker Mayfield. The Browns gave Deshaun Watson a $230 million fully guaranteed contract, the most guaranteed money in NFL history. No one has ever guaranteed a contract of that number. And it goes to the guy who now is accused by 30 different women of sexual harassment slash assault. That's the guy who has signed the most lucrative guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL. It wasn't Tom Brady. It wasn't Peyton Manning. It wasn't Patrick Mahomes. It wasn't Russell Wilson, all of which would have been more deserving. It was Deshaun Watson who, who gets the... The, the biggest guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL. There's a lot of reasons that that is extremely upsetting to me. First of all, I don't give a shit what the Cleveland Browns have to say about anything ever again. Morally, that is a bankrupt organization. That, that, that is an organization that does not care about people outside of the football field. They don't care about the 30 women that, uh, that say that Deshaun Watson sexually harassed them, sexually assaulted them. They don't care about those women. Jimmy Haslam has made it very clear the, the owner of the Cleveland Browns, he made it very clear. I don't care about women. I care about winning football games. That's what he's saying by giving a $230 million contract to Deshaun Watson. Now, sports media doesn't want to talk about this. Why, why don't they want to talk about it? Sports media doesn't want to talk about it because it could hurt their bottom line. They don't want for when the Cleveland Browns are playing in prime time for you to go, you know, the Cleveland Browns, I'm not watching this game. Sports media doesn't want you having that opinion. They don't want you having that stance because it's bad for their business. They want you to watch the game. They want you to be excited about it. They want to be able to promote the game and get you excited about it. The same way that the league completely brushed over Ben Roethlisberger's accusations, the, the two women that accused him of sexual assault, the league just brushed over that. They didn't care. The same way that the league didn't care about the, the Ray Lewis situation. The, the league just doesn't care. Really, Deshaun Watson should not be playing for any football team. Really, when a man does certain things like this, you should not be given the privilege of a platform in the NFL. The only exception to this that I have found in all of these years is somebody who actually pays their debt to society. Somebody who makes a mistake, does something wrong, and actually owns up to it, pays a penalty for it. The person who comes to mind is Michael Vick. Now, I hate thinking about what he did to all those dogs that I'm a dog. I am a dog lover. I absolutely love dogs. Pit bulls in particular. I love I, I my ex-wife and I had a pit bull together. I love that guy more than anything in the world. But Michael Vick paid his debt. We, by, by the way, a, a debt that was actually steeper than most people would get for animal abuse. Most people don't get two years in prison for, for beating a dog. Right or wrong, whether we feel like it should be more strict or less strict, that's a conversation for another time. But no one ever gets that sentence. Michael Vick got a two-year sentence. And after that, I went, you know what? He should be allowed to come back to the NFL. He, We have a system in this country. Our system is if you do something wrong, you get caught doing something wrong, um, and, and we prosecute you and find you guilty of doing something wrong, then you go to prison, and that's how you recoup. That's how you rehabilitate. The intention is that it gives you some time to think about what went wrong in your life, what you did. And when you get out, what decisions you're going to make differently so that you don't make these mistakes again. Deshaun Watson never went through that. Ben Roethlisberger never went through that. Ray Lewis never went through that. There are certain people in the NFL who did really messed up things and never, never had to own up to it, never had to account for it, never had to pay their debts. Which, by the way, I don't know if there is a way to, to repay your debt when it comes to sexual assault, sexual harassment, potential murder or covering up a murder potential. You know, those types of things. This is really just a long-winded way of saying the Cleveland Browns deserve this. They deserve to go through. But I would like to get your thoughts. So please let me know in the comments section. 
Do you think that Deshaun Watson was a good investment, a bad investment? Do you think that it's morally bankrupt for the Browns to have given him this extremely lucrative contract? Seems like a no-brainer to me, but maybe you've got a perspective on it that I haven't thought about. That's why we have common sections. That's why we live in a country where we're free to voice our opinions, um, and that's all great.